Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Long time no see. It's been quite a while. Sorry for the glare. Got new glasses. So I thought I would tell you what's going on. Um, it's been a crazy month. It's been a crazy couple weeks and I don't think it's going to slow down anytime soon. Um, last week or week before, last Thursday. Last Thursday, my mom ended up going to the ER due to, um, she was having really bad heartburn and our, her doctor, which is my doctor too, gave her this prescription to swish your mouth and swallow it because he thought because of all of the um, antibiotics, she could have had a um, yeast infection in her throat, but it made her sick. So she, that's, she kept throwing up. That's why she called. And they took her in because she was swollen in her stomach and her legs. And she called the day, the night before. And they didn't take her in. So they did a CT scan on her stomach. And it was discovered that her cancer spread to her stomach. That shocked us. She was surprised. I mean, she knew her cancer was there. Her ovarian was, you know, but she didn't think it would spread. And, um, yeah. So she decided to go on hospice again, but she was in the hospital for a few days. She was mad at her doctor, well, my doctor too, because he no longer does hospitals anymore. So they have the hospital doctors, and she was yelling at the hospital doctors. <laughs> and, uh, anyway. She came home Monday on hospice, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I hardly got any sleep because, like, as soon as, like, the nurse left or caretaker left or whoever, she would start yelling, crying, and in pain, um, yelling for her mom, yelling for me to get, you know, she wanted to get out of bed, and we're like, no, you can't get out of bed. She would kick me. She dug her nails into me and my arm. Um... Wednesday, he, her brother came, and he saw firsthand what it was like. Wednesday, we didn't get any sleep. I did eventually fall asleep, but it was early morning. And um, Thursday, she was starting up again. I mean, when her caretaker was here, she was fine. Then she left. Then she started up again. She did call her boss, and he, would, he came because my mom was thinking of hiring more help for nights. Um, well, more help in general, but it was going to be at night because it would have helped me a great deal to get like get some sleep. It was really stressing me out. But in the meantime, my uncle called the hospice and um, see if you know they can do anything, if she could come out. And um, later... She did call back and said that they were going to get somebody to take bring her in because that morning when the CNAs came to bathe her and change her sheets, they discovered, because the night before she was screaming and kicking and all that stuff, she ended up, because they did a tap on her stomach to get fluid out of the stomach so she could breathe better, and it was leaking still when she was in the hospital. So they put a colostomy bag on her. She ripped that out during the night. She had a port with, um, you know, things to put for needles, to, IVs to go in, so they could get in the body. She pulled that out. That really freaked the, the CNAs out because they took a picture of it and put it in the bag. And that's, I think, why they um, decided to bring her in so they can um, monitor her morphine and uh, stuff like that and uh, as soon as she did she went downhill uh, we visited her Friday for a little bit and um, he left Saturday that this trip really took it on him he said when he came home he slept for 12 hours it really shook him he didn't expect her to be this bad we didn't expect her to be this bad and we didn't know how long she would have. Um, but hospice kept me updated every day. 
and I knew she wasn't going to come home, come home, which was fine for me because I don't think I could have dealt with that stress. And her so and the social worker there came by on Friday, and uh, before we went to see her, and you know I did ask if I can, you know, think I should go call the doctor to get you know the stress and he's like yeah that'd be a good idea so I wanted to go Friday he didn't have any there was no openings for an appointment on Friday so I went I went today um it's when she left my uh stress level went away down quite a bit uh but yeah Saturday he left my uncle left and before he left, I swore, because this happened to me more than once, I heard her call my name loud and clear. But that's happened before. <laughs> and she's like, no, I didn't call you. <laughs> but anyway, so Sunday morning, they called me and said that um, she was starting to decline. And it would be within 24 hours. So, of course... As much as I didn't want to, be, be only because I know how much Uber and Lyft would be and be a quite a pretty penny, because when we left to see her on a Friday, I went to see how much it would be coming from there to here. It would have been like twenty bucks. I think that was with a pool, walking. Cause, you know, I can go to a whole rant right now on Uber. They're not as cheap as they used to be. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I went to see her, came back home, and around 10.30, I got a call that, from hospice saying that she passed. So um, I made a few phone calls that night, a couple of them, and then I made a more calls today this morning to like the social security which took forever <laughs> on hold forever um the pensions which i'm hoping i can make i can get get you know get it um insurances i know i'm getting the um, refund from them because i just paid them like not that long ago you know pen and a um, couple of friends um, of my mom's and I made the arrangements for the funeral luckily those my mom when my dad died or before my dad died she made the arrangements for him and also prepaid for her that was a money saver I did have to pay like a little bit um, for a couple of things that went up in price like death certificates they went up this month the first death certificate, thirty nine dollars for the first death certificate. Death certificate. The rest, if you need more, they're twenty four dollars. That's insane. Um, but anyway, that's another rant. <laughs> so that the funeral is going to be Thursday after afternoon and I'm really hoping it will be more than just me and my uncle and our my mom's caretaker <laughs> um I'm really hoping there'll be more than just the three of us but anyway um so all I have to do now is a waiting game for the death certificate so I can send one to my broker with two in my hand so I can get some money so I can pay some more bills that are going to come in and uh, property taxes and the homeowner's insurance. So yeah. So Friday when the social worker came to talk to me about like the house and mental health and health for help, more help for my mom at the time. <laughs> um, I was... I, well, I asked if it was, should I go to the doctor? And he's like, yeah. And so I made an appointment. I was hoping for it to go that Friday. But that didn't happen because he didn't have any openings. So I went today. So I told him the news and he was very sorry. And I told him that she was mad at him. <laughs> she was. 
Um, he want she really wanted to see him at the hospital, but he no longer does hospital visits anymore. Um, I told him he was mad about giving her that prescription because it made her sick, and I know he was upset. <laughs> he felt really bad. I know that, and um, he did give me a prescription for stress. I have to be careful taking it, so I'm gonna be. I'm a little bit scared of taking it now. <laughs> so I gotta pick that up tomorrow. I gotta go back to hospice because I have to pick up her wedding ring. I'm wearing her necklace that she wore every day since her uh, her mother died. Um, hopefully you'll bring me luck like it did her at the casino. <laughs> she better bring me luck. Um. So yeah, I gotta do that. I also at the hospice I have to take the narcotics that they delivered her morphine and stuff so they can dispose of it. And then I gotta go, like I said, pick up my prescription. I wanna get her prescriptions all gathered up so I can maybe dispose of it because they have a thing you can dispose of all prescriptions there. So I wanna do that. And then I gotta pay my ATT phone bill. And I want to take her phone in, turn that in and get that number taken off so my bill can be a little bit lower. So, yeah, so I got to do all that. My name's already on the bill, so I don't have to worry, worry about that. She did that when we went to get, um, take his name off of that, of the phone bill. And I got my new phone. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so all I have to do is, like, get a lawyer about the see about the house um they look at my will or my mom's will and call all the utility companies and cable company and all that fun stuff and uh, I gotta cancel her credit card and I'm really hoping that that credit card company doesn't do what my dad's credit card company Citibank did to us, did to her when she called and um, to cancel his card, and they, you know, I know you shouldn't have to pay when you're, you know, once you tell them that they're dead, you shouldn't have to pay the credit card bill. But uh, Citibank sent a collect a collector, uh, sent a collector to my mom and called to get the money. Mm. Anyway, and that's enough rambling. I, uh, it's lower than 15 minutes, so I think this should go up on YouTube. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'm hoping to come back to the YouTube land soon. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.